Ayo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show, and I know my next video was supposed to be about Spongebob Season 9, but that's a special video and I'm going to need a little bit more time before I post it. I'm shooting for a next video after this one, but if it doesn't come out until then, most definitely the video after that. But let's talk about this video. Let's talk about my second review ever. I sound like I'm asleep and whispering under my bed, but the point still stands. As I said in this video, the top 20 best cartoons I've reviewed viewed that this is one of my favorite episodes of all time. This episode will hold a special place in my heart, but I do feel like my points could have been condensed down to a few key moments that I will discuss here now. Harriman in this episode is very relaxed compared to a lot of other appearances. Although his main appearance is really his significance in the beginning, there is a major problem with Harriman in this episode, which I addressed initially in my original review. Harriman received a call from Mac that he would be moving but not not moving away. Harriman is not known to lose his memory within what? 15 minutes? And think about this for a second. Harriman got the call from Mac. Then when the episode started from the audience's perspective, Harriman greeted the guest, then explained it to Blue. So when did he forget that? This is extremely puzzling because Harriman is at the party for Mac. Why would he be at the party knowing all of this information and not ever once have that crucial bit of evidence pop into his head where he missed that big reason why this party is being held in the first place? This is never answered and like many problems I have with cartoons, this could have been easily avoided. Just rewrite this situation where Harriman knew nothing of the party and was never at the party. Yeah, you'd still have the issue of Harriman having short term memory loss, but I'm willing to overlook that because that isn't the biggest deal. So just to be clear, it is the fact that Harriman forgot within the span of 10 to 15 minutes and then attended the party that was made to wish Mac, the guy who everyone thought was moving away, goodbye. And in this shot here he seen surprised all of this combined that is what makes this really hard to suspend my disbelief for mac is really interesting in this episode for one he seems to be very complex but in a good way and this may seem obvious but let me explain so mac isn't aware of blue's subtle tendencies to want mac to himself and this grows less and less subtle throughout the episode i get that this episode would be over if mac just went over to blue and wondered what was wrong and that can't be answered because of Harriman who messed up the message. You see how one problem at the core can cause multiple problems branching out? Now Mac isn't bad here. Mac is only not good when interacting with Blue. With everyone else, I think he was pretty much spot on. And he was the number two reason why this episode shines. I did like how he wanted to spend his time with everyone and do things he hasn't because Blue is usually the person with the idea. Mac is a very creative kid and here is no different. I like how he's involved with many jokes like the Foster's cookie or the painting joke later in the episode. He does come across more like someone who may be going away for a while and that's actually the point that I think really makes this episode work. It's a complex reason and outside of reviewing I wouldn't really think about it too much but yes, Mac is great here except with Blue because of what Harriman said to Blue and the writing that followed revolving around this misunderstanding. There is a lot of references in this episode worth noting so let's get through a few of them. Like I said earlier, we have the reference to a previous episode in the series with Madame Foster making her world famous cookies. We also have stats the stat board when Mac was playing basketball with Wilt returning after his initial appearance in Good Wilt Hunting. We also have the return of the alter ego Orlando Blue, the trench coat stud that also involves Wilt making a cameo here. Heck, the show even goes through many of them when Blue suggests ideas to do. Now this is a finale that definitely rewards you for watching a series. Yes to a new viewer, they wouldn't know what these are and that's the perfect balance with this extra layer. You don't need to know it's there to understand the episode, but if you want to enjoy this episode a lot more, in my opinion, if you watch the episodes before this series finale, you would. Also, if someone chose the series finale as their first episode to watch of the series, then they kind of deserve every spoiler they get. This is how references should work. And I've been saying this since the very beginning with my first review, but now with my Foster's extra discussion. You should be able to enjoy the episode without knowing the reference. This is the proof that a strong foundation wouldn't wall up viewers if they don't know certain things that aren't really necessary to know when watching an episode. 
episode. Also, this may be speculation, but this also shows that there is a lot of love for this series. From what I know, McCracken doesn't outright hate the series, and even displays his signature at the end, where the credits are for this particular episode. The fact that they don't hide their episodes, but rather take pride and celebrate all of the other episodes in this series, may show a love from the staff that they got this far. Most series don't even make it past season 3, and they've surpassed that. This has to be the top 5 best appearances of Blue Guard Q Kazoo. Blue seems to have went across the spectrum of human emotion in this episode. He was very angry and upset in the beginning, nearly wanting to kill Mac with a paddle ball. He was empathetic for Mac once he realized that Mac has his own problems to deal with every day. He was very generous when it came to letting Mac plan out his day today. He was very impatient when Mac wanted to hang out with everyone because of that, because Blue didn't have a set idea. Because Blue didn't have an idea of his own. He was determined when building the ramp for said sharks that he wanted to jump in the episode. He was a sad mess when it came to the ending. He was jealous all around the episode. There are so many emotions that Blue had captured and displayed flawlessly within the span of about 22 minutes. In fact, the laugh Blue has when Mac even calls out for Blue for believing that once Mac heard the news, he'd want to kill Mac. It's just perfect. I am in disbelief that they could have done that laugh any better. He's not really annoying in this episode given the circumstance. His role in this made me feel like I wanted him to get what he wanted. He didn't come across spoiled. Also, add to the fact that his cartoonish antics spread throughout the episode really made this enjoyable to watch. Mind you, this is a series finale, and there's only so many ways you can go about this this is it sort of vibe. The staff chose for Blue to act like himself if he knew that someone or something would be over. He tried to cope with it but eventually that wouldn't pan out and he'd cry and make a large scene. This is who Blue is and I truly appreciate the whole crank to 11 intensity that he has here. The ending is one of the smaller points because it's only a few seconds but what a few seconds this was. The introduction of this show starts out with a point which extends to a line which which evolves more and more with colors and zooms into the world created with so many different characters, personalities, and environments. Having all of that reverse may seem pretty cheap to an uninformed viewer, but the message it was trying to display was massive. You're pretty much telling the viewer that this was the end of the idea. The entire world is now blank, ready for anyone's interpretation going forward. It could be hard to do the whole and then you interpret the rest sort of ending. Even in Ed, Ed, and Eddie, the finale didn't necessarily necessarily do it best there. But what sets this a few miles ahead of the finale is that here they took something at that time and made what seemed like a small deal into a big deal by showing the significance of it at the very end. Simply put, this ending was spectacular as a viewer, as a fan, and now as a reviewer. So now we get to the YouTuber's perspective of how I believe I was feeling around that time. Now around this time I was still trying to do both gaming content and animation content and from what I can tell you from what I believe was going on around here is that I was getting into the groove of using Sony Vegas to edit with and what's funny is that looking back it was actually the fourth review I believe I said this before but the fourth review is where my style at least at the fundamentals was at least mastered the vision I had was clip heavy which meant that I had to deal with a lot of copyright at the time and I do understand why our community may be small because a lot of people don't necessarily want to deal with that and the companies don't seem to be letting go or lessening this but I can say based off of the two copyright claims that I got from Viacom one for my Ellis for Love review and the next one for my Goodbye Krabby Patty review both of those were released as soon as they were challenged now this is a very important distinction that I think a lot of people who get claims tend to misinterpret if it's an automatic claim that means a robot picked it up in the robot robot will pick it up because you actually have the clips in there. However, if it's a manual claim, or if the person viewing the claim doesn't deem your review fair, then that is actually what we should all be upset about. However, as a fan, I do know that you guys don't know that, which is why a lot of times I don't complain about my copyright problems to you guys. But I do want to say in a sea full of Viacom hate, they actually did release the claims of my latest two Nickelodeon reviews. But the takeaway I want to give to you guys based off of this video, based off of this review, whether 
whether you want to talk about cartoons or if you just want to make other videos in general is that you're actually going to have to make a lot of videos in order to understand what style you want because I say this all the time your style is not what you do it's actually what you don't do what you don't want in your videos they may be fine in a quote objective way but subjectively based off of your style you may not want that like for example for me I'm not too big on an avatar. However, I am planning something later on, which I don't want to give too many details on right now. However, now I want to transition into reading a few comments. And if you see the pattern from here, I would highly suggest leaving some comments on my third review, the Mighty B Little Woman review. This is my childhood. I'm so old. This show first aired the same year I moved into the US. This show is a big part of my childhood. I see a lot of people saying that, and I agree. Growing up, I used to love watching Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. And it's it's kind of great to see that at the time a lot of people do remember this finale. I kind of hope the children growing up today can remember the finales of the shows they like on Cartoon Network that are airing now. Seeing as with a few finales Cartoon Network isn't necessarily in a rush to air them again. You didn't fail to notice the jump the shark metaphor did you? I actually did. At this time I was just putting out reviews I wasn't necessarily skilled so there's actually a lot of things I haven't noticed that's exactly why I'm making this extra discussion here. Man I cried at at the very last episode. Then it was ruined when I found out people ship everyone here. Yeah, I can see why some people when they go on the internet and they want to discuss things with other people, you kind of also have a small section of every community where they just ship people and they don't necessarily care about the episodes in question. I thought Harriman purposely omitted the information to mess with Blue. To be honest, I'm pretty sure that he did it on purpose just to mess with Blue. I would be inclined to agree with you guys, but there isn't enough evidence to back up that claim. Your voice changed so much during the last year. Well number one I actually started to talk with a lot more energy and because of that I knew at some point I would have to redo a lot of my older videos because unlike a let's play you can actually redo it and have largely the same outcome. Wait a sec Blue came from Max Imagination so if he killed him wouldn't he kill himself in the process? I don't know that's actually something that a lot of people don't really talk about. I'm gonna go with yes only because and this is coming from logic since there's more people coming in the world and more people creating imaginary friends, at some point there'd be too many imaginary friends. Because if they don't die, then they just take up space. And if they take up space, then they would have had to have been full already. I mean, this doesn't seem like it's 1400s or the 1300s, it doesn't seem like any of that. Who would want to adopt Blue? So annoying, worst part of the show. If Blue existed in real life and no one was able to imagine their own imaginary friend, I would adopt Blue in a heartbeat. I would make reaction videos and have Blue sit down and watch himself in the episode. To say that I would make millions off of that idea is an understatement. You know guy, you're not half bad. I will still continue to enjoy Mr. Enter, but you have earned my viewership. Thank you so much. I still remember this comment to this day. It's actually one of the first comments I actually got on my channel. It kind of goes to show that you don't necessarily have to be perfect before you start getting fans. So while I strive to continue improving performance wise with my own voice, trying to get new topics that are also interesting, and getting these videos to be as high of quality they can be both visually and concept wise, I can be confident that there is at least some people who are willing to join by me on this journey. Before Cheese moves in with me, make sure to follow me at the Alpha J Show on Twitter or join my public Discord. Both avenues are a great way to reach me for channel updates or just if you have a question or 40. The links for those will be in the description below as well as the request page. If you really like this video I highly suggest checking out my extra discussion on my first review ever or the playlist in general. Make sure to subscribe and feel free to consider my Patreon. As always, I hope your time was well spent and Alpha out.